Good evening and happy iftar and welcome to Liberty News. I am Muhammad Iskil Abdullahi. In the headlines, Delta governor meets Tunibu over killing of soldiers. INEC warns parties against Akrom, a criminal parallel primaries ahead of Edo Ondo Guba poll. Customs duty forex rate drops by 1.5% as Naira strengthens. On the international scene, we will tell you that U.S. reports death of senior Hamas military leader Marwan Isa. And on sports, Iwobi, Simon, Wabali, seven others arrive Super Eagles camp in Morocco. Details of this and many more will come to you in the bulletin. <coughs> President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has said that all Progressive Congress APC is on the path of victory in the forthcoming governorship election in Edo State. Tinubu expressed optimism in Abuja during the presentation of the party's flag to the governorship candidate Senator Mandi Apeholo and his running mate, Honorable Dennis Idahosa. Addressing a gathering of parties towards led by the national chairman of the APC, Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduje at the State House, the president in a statement by his spokesman, Ajuri Ingilali, pledged that the party would stand with the candidates like the wall of Gibraltar. President Tinubu commended the leadership of the party in Edo for their efforts towards the success of the candidates and the party. Governor Sharif Oberovi has met the President Bola Ahmed Tinubu over the killing of 16 military personnel in Ukoma, a community of Ugueli South local government area of Delta State. Recall that 16 military personnel comprising the commanding officers of a 181 amphibious battalion, a Lieutenant Colonel, two majors, one captain and 12 other soldiers were killed while on a peacekeeping mission in Okuoma community last week on Thursday. While the Delta State and the federal governments have condemned the incident, they promised that the perpetrators of the heinous act would face the wrath of the law in the visit of the state governor to the presidency on Tuesday may have been spurred by the incident. Briefing State House correspondent after the meeting behind closed doors with the president, the governor said the situation was under control, assuming that there would be no more further attacks. The Nigerian Senate has called on the federal government to apprehend the perpetrators of the horrific killing of military personnel in Ukoma community in Delta State on March 14, 2014 and bring them to book. Last Thursday, some senior army officers and their men who were on a peace mission to the troubled area were reportedly ambushed and killed by armed youth. The upper legislative chamber equally called for the recruitment of more policemen so that the military would not be dragged into civil, the military would not be dragged into civil matters. not only killed but their bodies were also decapitated the unfortunate incident occurred when the troops responded to a distress call after the communal crisis between the Okwama and Okoloba communities both in Delta State it recognizes that the tragic incident involving the attack on military personnel from the 181 amphibious battalion during a peace mission to Okwama community in Delta State worried that the understaffing of the Nigerian police worried that the understaffing of the Nigerian police has made Nigeria's military to take over internal policing duties such as organized crime, oil theft, communal crisis, kidnapping, banditry, and other pol policy responsibilities. The lawmaker's father described the act as provocative, saying that the incident portends danger for the innocent indigenous of the communities in the region. What happened in Delta was not an accident. Effort to kill our military men. And it was done in a very barbaric way, very bestial. Mr. President, those who did that deserve to be condemned. 
but I believe that this Senate and indeed the National Assembly should also be looking at the direction of reducing our military from conducting police actions and activities. What, how do you do that? I believe we must insist on getting more and more policemen to be recruited. Just like we also need more military. Join uh, other colleagues. And I think everyone in this Senate and across our country in condemning the very sad and dastardly act um, that was committed against officers and men of our country's uh, military. It's not every day, even in a war situation, it's not every day a country suffers this kind of loss, even in a war, even during war times. All in all, terrible development, a very sad day for our country and our country's military. A lieutenant colonel, two majors, and others died in one fell swoop. It's a very sad loss. And we commiserate, and it's appropriate for us to commiserate with them and direct an inquiry. Mr. President, Mr. President, Nigeria, this is crunch time for our country. And we must always ensure that whatever thing that we're doing, we must be tolerant with one another. A situation where this number of soldiers will be killed in one swap is highly regrettable. Soldiers are meant to protect the life and property of our citizenry. And even the communities themselves are supposed to have tolerance in dealing with such issues. Very sensitive issue, Mr. President. It is very sensitive and we must handle it in the manner that it will not escalate. You will, you will recall the incidents of Odi in the past. We don't want such occurrence in our system, in our country at this point in time because the entire country is heated up. Anything that will make it to heat up more, we should not allow that to happen. So, Mr. President, I will... In his remark, President of the Senate, Godswill Akpabio, advised the military to carry out a thorough investigation so as to ascertain that those that murdered the soldiers in Delta State are actually Nigerians. Uh, it's a very sad development. I think the Senate awaits the outcome of the investigations. So I urge the, the committees on defense, committee on army, committee on navy, and the committee on uh, air force combined to liaise with the military to find out, to obtain for uh, first hand for us the outcome of the investigation. On, uh, in respect of these dastardly killings. Yeah, because I don't think these people are Niger Deltans. We are not at war, even in a period of war, to lose such number of personnel. No community will go to the extent of doing this kind of thing. I don't think they are from Niger Delta. So I think the first point should be that we should first establish the, the, the culprits who committed this crime. We must take it seriously. Supposing they are not from Niger Delta, supposing they are not even Nigerians, and we now come and talk about giving relief materials to uh, people who have a, people should uh, for the consequences of their crimes. I will not support relief material. The Senate, however, rejected a prayer to observe one minute silence or to commiserate with the families of the innocent civilians killed in the process, saying that their numbers are still unknown. The House of Representatives has urged military authorities to investigate the br brutal murder of 16 armed personnel in the Okoma community in Delta State. Recall that 17 soldiers deployed to the settlement on a peace mission met their alt, uh, untimely death last Thursday in the hands of Irati youth of the community. 
Moving a matter of urgent importance titled Need to Investigate and Apprehend Perpetrators of the Gruesome Killing of 16 Military Personnel in Delta State on the floor of the House of on, th on Tuesday. Members representing Ikorodu Federal Constituency Babajimi Benson described the incident as mindless and unfortunate. He recalled that the fallen heroes were only resp responding to a distress call in their service to their fatherland when they were ambushed and killed. Following the adoption of the motion, the House observed a minute silence in honor of the dead and mandated the armed forces of Nigeria to conduct a thorough and wholesome investigation into the circumstances that led to the heartless, gruesome and despicable act. In a related development, uh, Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives Benjamin Kalu has charged senior legislative aides in his office to collaborate with other principal officers for the overall interest in the Green Chamber. Kalu gave the charge at a retreat organized by his senior legislative aides with the theme Synergy and Success. Liberty News correspondent in the House of Representatives Abdul Yusuf now reports. The retreat hall in attendance, former deputy speakers of the House of Representatives, namely the immediate past deputy speaker of the House of Representatives, Ahmed Wase, in the Night Assembly, Emeka Ihedioha, and Ahmed Garoji. Ahmed Wase, in his goodwill message, advised the aides to distance themselves from acts of corruption and dwell on issues such as a constitution review exercise and that of the committee of the whole in the House, which are directly chaired by the Deputy Speaker and are very taxing. And we need to do a lot because the country is desirous and searching for a lot of good work from us so that we will be out of the shadow of poverty and as an unappreciated thing, anti corruption, which is the most important aspect of it. If we have a correct minded people, you can succeed from whatever you want to do. First, we must remove that corruption and then thought and actions from all of us. And it starts with this experience. So the Deputy Speaker serves our nation in a very, very, very high capacity. And so you are privileged because you're serving him. That also elevates the status in your respective constituencies and wherever you find yourselves. So please be appreciative of that privilege. The European Union ambassador to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Samuela Isopi, said the European Union remains the strongest ally and natural partner of Nigeria that is dedicated to that is dedicated to strengthen the resilience of democracy through the National Assembly. Both the House must revisit gender bill that was rejected by the National Assembly some time ago. As the largest democracy in Africa, Nigeria is critical to strengthen democratic governance in West Africa where democracy is under threat. Strengthening and deepening Nigeria's democracy is key to reverse the situation and send a powerful signal to the region. So, the Honorable Deputy Speaker, we look forward to working together with you to synergizing our efforts to further strengthening and improving the electoral process in Nigeria. Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Benjamin Bukalu, urged his senior legislative aides to use their various offices to impact positively on the nation as they are not only custodians of the Deputy Speaker's office, but ambassadors of Nigeria's democracy. The ongoing constitution amendment must therefore be given. The ongoing constitution review exercise must therefore be given the deserved attention it needs by his senior aides. We are tasked with dealing with complex issues surrounding projects and budgets. This duty requires an in-depth understanding of our national economy, like one of the speakers mentioned a few minutes ago, strong analytical skills, and a commitment to promoting sustainable economic growth. In the realm of politics, you interface with the political aspects of the office. This role requires navigating the complex interplay of political interests and alliances while always keeping the nation's best interests at heart, especially as it pertains to national cohesion and national loyalty. 
The Deputy Speaker also promised to push the gender bill for its development. Abdel Yusuf, National Assembly, Liberty News. That was our senior correspondent, Abdul Yusuf, over there. But Abdul Yusuf, don't go any further. The Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Benjamin Kalu, says interparliamentary relations play a critical role in addressing national challenges. The Deputy Speaker, who made this known at the inaugural session of the House Committee on Interparliamentary Relations, said it serves as a cornerstone to diplomatic efforts in the legislature, which enables it to foster stronger bonds with its international counterparts. Liberty News correspondent Abdul Yusuf has more on this. It is important to note that the Committee on Interparliamentary Relations serves as a foreign relations organ of the House of Representatives. Therefore, let us not forget the profound impact our actions can have shaping Nigeria's foreign policy and global position. Ahead of the November 16, 2024 governorship election in Ondo State, the ruling All Progressive Congress APC has released its timetable and schedule of activities leading to the party's selection of the candidate on April 25, 2024. The APC timetable released late Monday was signed by the party's National Organizing Secretary, Suleiman Argunku. According to the party, the sale of nominations, expressions of interest and delegate forms for contestants will begin on April the 3rd and end April 10, 2024, while the primary election is slated for April, April 25, 2024 like its governorship primary in Edo State, which produced Monday Apeholo and the plug Biara, the APC pegged the prize for the expression of interest and nomination form as 10 million naira and 40 million naira respectively for Ondo. The party said female aspirants and persons with disabilities are to pay for expression of interest while the nomination form is free. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, on Tuesday frowned at various infractions committed by political parties ahead of the Edo and Ondo governorship election. The Edo state governorship elections is scheduled to be held on September 21, 2024, while the Ondo state governorship election will be held on November 16, 2024. The INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, in the first regular court quarterly consultative meeting with political parties in Abuja noted that infractions such as acrimonious primaries and the emergence of multiple candidates among others lead to unnecessary litigation among party members. Yakubu urged political parties to adhere strictly to its proposed dates and modes of primaries. Meanwhile, the National Chairman Interparty Advisory Council, Yusuf Antelli, noted that the council would be proactive to ensure that the Edo and Ondo state governorship elections meet the expectations of Nigerians. The Edo State House of Assembly has passed a resolution directing the Chief Judge of the State Justice Daniel Okungwa to set up a seven-man committee to investigate the allegations of gross misconduct leveled against the Deputy Governor Philip Shuaibu. Newsman reports that the House passed the resolution during plenary on Tuesday. 19 out of the 24 members of the House voted in favor of the resolution. Earlier, the Speaker, Blessing Agbebaku, had notified the House that the seven-day ultimatum granted the Deputy Governor to respond to the impeachment notice served on, on him has expired. Agbebaku said the impeachment notice was served on, de on the Deputy Governor on March 6, 2024, but due to alleged evasion of service, the House ordered that he be served through substituted means. <coughs> Justice Binta Inyaku of the Federal High Court Abuja on Tuesday denied bail to the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Aipop Namdikanu. The court, however, ordered accelerated hearing of the case involved in the embattled IPOP leader who is facing charges bordering on treasonable felony. Kanu, who was brought to the court on Tuesday, has been in the custody of the DSS, 
since his arrest in June 2021. Namdi Khan was asked to address the court and his request was granted. He told the court that he is suffering from cognitive heart disease and has not been getting the best treatment in the custody of the DSS. Kanu asked to be moved to Kujia prison or placed on house arrest, but his pleas were rejected by Justice Inyaku, who subsequently adjourned the case till April 17, 2024, for commencement of trial. The Court of Appeal in Abuja has dismissed the appeal brought before it by Felix Okonko, one of the lawyers of the detained leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Aipop Nandikanu, over his unlawful arrest and detention by the police and the Department of State Service, DSS. Delivering judgment, Justice Okon Abang dismissed the appeal for want of merit and substance. Justice Abang held that the appellant fails to establish miscarriage of justice in the judgment of a high court of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Abuja, in that matter. He further held that from the video footage tendered as exhibited by the appellant at the trial court, there was nowhere the operatives of the DSS were found at the scene of their arrest in the house of Ifanyi Ejofo in Anambra State. The appellants comprising Felix Okonko, Ikena Chibuke, and Okafo Oguchuku had sued the Nigerian police force and the DSS before the High Court for enforcement of their fundamental human rights. <coughs> As the seven day warning strike by members of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, and the non academic uh, staff union, NASU, enters its second day on Tuesday, grounding activities at the nation's public ivory tours. The federal government has criticized the action of the non-academic staff, saying that the withdrawal of their services is contrary to the provisions of, the, of Section 18 of the Trade Dispute Act. The two unions began a seven-day warning strike on Monday over withheld salaries with workers in registry, bursary, works and maintenance, security and student affairs withdrawing their services. Newsmen who visited public universities across the country observed that nothing moved administratively within any public university in Nigeria as hostels and varsity gates were locked up and electricity supply cut off. But Sanu and Nasu are protesting withheld salaries by the federal government. The two unions berated the federal government for paying with withheld salaries for the academic staff union of universities ASU while neglecting the known academic unions. The National Youth Service Corps has re restated its commitment to modern techniques and good stock keeping practices as enshrined in the federal government adopted computerization process for its store offices across all NYSE formations nationwide. It said the scheme would continue to provide updated information on the administration and inventory control management of government stores such as government information and financial management information system give miss among others. The NYC Director General Brigadier General Y.D. Ahmed disclosed this today in Abuja while declaring open the store officers workshop with the theme ensuring accountability and good record keeping in contemporary store. The Sokoto State Governor Ahmed Ali Sokoto has ordered the immediate relocation of the dumping site for the central market following a fire incident which gutted scores of shops, motorcycles and properties running into billions of naira on Monday. The governor gave the directive while when he visited the market for on the spot assessment of the situation. In a message posted on his social media handle, the governor called for evacuation of debris within the environment within three weeks from yesterday. Troops of the Nigerian Army 1 Division have rescued 16 abducted victims in Kajuru Kaduna State. They also averted a kidnap attempt by an extremist group. The Director of Army Public Relations Major General Onyema Mwachuku said in a statement that the Nigerian Army troops deployed in a division in in one division area of responsibility in Kaduna State have successfully averted a kidnapped attempt by a violent extremist and insurgent group 
and rescued the abductees in Tentanu community of Kajuru local government area of the state. According to him, the troops were responding to intelligence on Sunday night when they tracked the insurgents who had abducted some persons in the village. We now go for a short break where you can also watch us live on our social media platforms on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, on TikTok and Instagram. But still to come, <clears throat> custom duty forex rate drops by 1.5% as Naira strengthens. On the international scene, you will hear that U.S. reports death of senior Hamas military leader Marwan Isa. And on sports, you will be Simon Mwabali, seven others arrive Super Eagles camp in Morocco. Stand by for this and many more after the break. second time in seven days, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has slashed the extent rate for computing custom duties at the nation's seaport and airports from 1,617.96 Naira to a dollar to 1,593.41 Naira to a dollar, representing 1.5% reduction. 
The slash analyst argued was as a result of the naira that strengthened against the dollar at the official window over the weekend. According to data on the federal government's single window for trade, the exchange rate for clearance of cargoes at the seaports on Monday is currently 1,593.41 naira to a dollar against 1,617.96 naira to a dollar. It was it was over the weekend. This showed that the customs exchange rate was reduced by 24.55 naira. To this end, importers that opened Form M today will pay less to clear their cargoes as import duties are benchmarked against the dollar. Up next is business news segment. Apologize for the absence of that report for the time being. Meanwhile, we continue on the international scene. Police in Kenya said a bus carrying students, a top Kenyan university, collided with a truck on busy highway after skidding in heavy rain, killing 11 of them and injuring 42 seriously. The incident occurred on Monday at Mwangu, 360 kilometers from the capital Nairobi, when the students from Kenyatta University were traveling to the coastal town of Mombasa. Ten people died on impact and another died later in hospital. Police said adding that 42, adding that 42 of them were, were seriously injured. Road accidents are common in the East African nation where road conditions are often poor and traffic regulations violated for ignorance. According to figures by the National Transport and Safety Authority, over 4,000 people were killed and 18,561 injured in 2023, a road accident in Kenya down 7.8% from the previous year. White House official Jake Sullivan has said Hamas leader Marwan Issa died on an Israeli air strike. As deputy military commander, Mr. Issa will be Hamas's most senior leader to die since the war began on 7 October. The Palestinian group which controls Gaza has not officially commend, commented on reports of this death. Israeli media sources have reported that Mr. Issa was killed in a strike on a tunnel complex under the Nusirat refugee camp in central Gaza last week. The deputy commander of the Hamas's military wing, the Izzedin al Qasim Brigades, was considered one of the Israel's most wanted men. The European Union, which placed the Hamas leader on its terrorist blacklist, blacklist, linked him directly to the 7 October attack led by the group, which killed approximately 1,200 people. Donald Trump cannot find private company to guarantee the $464 million he has been ordered to pay in a New York civil fraud case. The former president must either pay the full amount in cash or secure a bond in order to continue his appeal. If he is unable to do so by the 25th March, he faces the prospect of some of his real estate assets being seized by the state's attorney general. Trump said that the securing of bond of that size was, practic was practically impossible. For a fee, a bonding company would guarantee the full amount to the New York court. Let us now join the International News Desk for more stories. Welcome to the International News. Residents of Peshenvar, a wealthier area of the city in Port-au-Prince, are shaking after their most violent day so far in the country's parallel insecurity crisis and the nation of Haiti. More than a dozen bullet-ridden bodies lay in the streets, the victims of the latest gang rampage. 
The latest early morning killing spree include the home of a judge who was also in the attack. A clear message to the country's elites vying for power. UNICEF's executive director Catherine Roxa has called the situation in Haiti horrific and likened the lawlessness to the post-apocalyptic film Mad Max. The UN has also estimated because of the closure of so many hospitals in the capital, some 3,000 pregnant women were at risk of having to give birth with no maternity care. In the maternity ward of Cap Haitian Public Hospital, cries of babies for food and comfort were the same as it is in every part of the island nation. Dr. Madoj Clevel, the hospital's obstetrician, said that the gas control of the roads in and out of Port-au-Prince was making it tough to find enough fuel to keep the lights on or the ceiling fans wearing in the hospital. More importantly, it has also hampered efforts to bring in the drugs and equipment they need. He added that pregnant women had traveled from Port-au-Prince to bring to give birth in, in the relatively safe safety of Cap Hayton, another part of the nation. And from Haiti to Hong Kong, Hong Kong has passed a tough security law which authorities say is necessary for stability, but which critics fear will further erode civil liberties. Article 23 targets new offenses like external interference and insurrection and penalties includes life sentences. It was fast-tracked through its final stage by the city's pro branching parliament in less than two weeks. Article 23 expands on a controversial national security law earlier imposed by China. That law already criminalizes succession, subversion, terrorism, and collusion with foreign forces in Hong Kong. But Hong Kong's leader, John Lee, has said Article 23 it's also necessary to guard against potential sabotage and undercurrents that try to create troubles, particularly ideas of an independent Hong Kong. He hailed its passing as a historic moment Hong Kong people have been waiting for over 26 years. China's Vice Premier Ding Zhuizhang earlier said swift enactment of the law legislation will protect core and national interests and allow Hong Kong to focus on economic development. And back to Africa, finally from Uganda, Ugandan security forces are on high alert after they say fighters from the, an Islamic State linked group entered the country at the weekend. The Allied Democratic Forces ADF militants are planning attacks in urban areas, places of worship, schools and public events. According to the army, it all the public to remain vigilant to avoid being victims of ADF terror. The ADF has been linked to a series of deadly attacks in Uganda, including targeting a school last June. The group was originally formed in Uganda in the 1990s by people disgruntled with the government's treatment of Muslims. But after being routed by the army, the remnants fled across the border to the Democratic Republic of Congo in 2021. Uganda and DR Congo launched a joint offensive to drive the ADF out of their Congolese strongholds but have so far failed to put an end to the group's attacks. Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, has repeatedly said the operation has succeeded in killing a large number of ADF fighters, including some commanders. But the FDF has been accused of continuing to carry out attacks, including on a school in western Uganda in June last year, when dozens of pupils were killed. Uganda's deputy military spokesperson, Colonel Dio Akiki, said in a statement released on Monday that a group of ADF militants crossed into Uganda from DR Congo on Saturday. This group is suspected to be under the command of a notorious ADF commander, Ahmed Mohammed Hassan, aka Abu Wakas, a Tanzanian-born ADF bomb expert, the statement for the state. And that's about the size of international news. More news will come your way. My name is Andy Ohene.
Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, has warned Football Association in the 36th state of the Federation and the FCT to play their Federation Cup final matches on either 30th March or 31st March as instructed by the NFF or risk a penalty of 1 million naira. Ruth David, NFF's Director of Competition, said that the football ruling body will no longer condone the disruptive attitude of some FAs who will set their own timetables outside that of the NFF. The NFF has stated clearly in the schedule from the beginning that the states must play their final matches either on Saturday 30th March or Sunday 31st March. This year's Federation Cup competition in the states began on Friday 1st March 2024. Ten players have arrived at Super Eagles camp in Morocco ahead of the friendlies against Ghana and Mali. The early arrivals in camp are Alex Iwobi, Moses Simon, Stanley Mwabali, Jamilu Collins and Bruno Onyemechi. The other players in camp are Serial Desas, Nathan Tella, Calvin Basi, Semi Ajayi and Fisayo Dede Bashiru. The players will have their first training session at 4.30 p.m. local time. The Super Eagles will take on Ghana in the Grand State Marrakech on Friday, March 2022. The three-time African champions will face Mali four days later at the same venue. Team Nigeria has maintained its push for a strong finish at the ongoing delayed 2023 African Games in Ghana as Chidi Anthony Okozi and six other Nigerian athletes qualified for the semi-finals of their events in athletics respectively. The US-born sprinter and two-time African Championships bronze medalist Okozi ran a season's best of 45.89 seconds to win Heat 2 and book his place in the semi-finals of the men's 400 meters. Similarly, Esther Elo Joseph was the fastest woman in the five 400 meter heats at the games as she ran the race of her life, posting a lifetime's best of 51.81 seconds. Also, through to the semi finals of women's 400, 400 meters was Brittany Adiri Nola Ogumokun, who finished third in the heat, won and booked an automatic sport. Wisdom great Musa also excelled in his 110 meters hurdles race, finishing third in his heat to secure an automatic qualification into the final. In the men's 100 meter race, Nigeria's national champion Oshorise Ishikiri clocked a time of 10.29 seconds to reach semi finals, just as considered a Kanem make sure of his place in the semi finals with 10.37 seasons. Defeating Ghana's Agath Barnabas, who ran 10.42 seconds to place second. To end the news, here is a recap of the major stories once again. Delta Governor meets Tinibu over a killing of soldiers. INEC warns parties against acrimonious parallel primaries ahead of Edo Ondo Gubapol. Custom duty forex rate drops by 1.5% as Naira strengthens. On the international scene, we told you that U.S. reports death of senior Hamas military leader Marwan Isa. And on sports, we told you that it will be Simon Nwabali, seven others, arrive Super Eagles camp in Morocco. The news team and the DCR wishes you a pleasant viewing time as we leave you with this Liberty quote by John.